Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I'm your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show every week, as we are doing today, and it is then posted onto our website for you to watch later at your convenience. And I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can access all of our recordings and archives. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So please do share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone you think might be interested in any of the topics we have on the show. We, um, for those of you who are not from Nebraska, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state library for Nebraska, kind of like if you have your, you know, your so-and-so state library. Um, we are that here. So we provide services and training and grants and consulting and anything you can think of for all types of libraries in the state. So you will find things on our show for all types of libraries. Um, K-12, publics, academics, corrections, museums, law, obviously, academic. <laughs> um, so we run the gamut. And we have lots of different kinds of things on here, book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, uh, demos of products and services we think that may be of interest to people. Um, so you'll find all sorts of things on our show. Uh, we do do um, have sessions done by Nebraska Library Commission staff sometime for things that we are specifically doing here at the Library Commission. Um, but we also bring in guest speakers from um, Nebraska and actually across the country from all over. And that's what we have this morning with us, a group of guest speakers who came um, all from here in Lincoln, at least, mm -hmm. just, you know, elsewhere in town. <laughs> um, and actually, I'll just, I don't know who wants to introduce who first, so I'll let you guys um, take over and talk about what we're going to be talking about, obviously, um, our topic for today is legal research for non-lawyers and librarians. Um, and we have some great resources through um, our University of Nebraska Lincoln and other things that we're going to talk about today. So I'll let you guys, whoever wants right. to be introducing. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, and it's really a pleasure to be here. We're excited. We've been looking forward to um, coming in addressing the librarians of the state, um, share some information with you. Um, my name is Richard Leiter. I'm the director of the Schmidt Law Library um, at the University of uh, Nebraska College of Law. Uh, joining me today are Keelan Weber, our head of cataloging and resource management. Did I get that right? Queen of technical services. Well, that's what she wants. <laughs> We're, we haven't settled on the <laughs> Queen uh, title yet, but she is who she is. And uh, Maureen Eck, um, the head of the Supreme Court's State Library. Very interesting place, and we'll get to more of that, uh, about it in, in just a minute. The reason that we're here today is uh, both of our libraries, the State Library uh, and the Schmidt Law Library are both open to the public. We share similar missions when it comes to serving the public. And um, just by uh, sort of happenstance, because of the massive uh, uh, renovation project happening at the state capitol, mm -hmm. the state library is now sharing our space. She's um, across the hall from me in, in the law library. And so in talking about uh, what we would talk about today, it just seemed natural to bring uh, Maureen uh, in. Uh, today what we want to do is we want to highlight uh, some services and resources that are available through our website and through the State Library's website that can help you assist your public patrons when they come in with legal questions. Um, and they're also available not only just for you but for your patrons as well. And we just wanted to remind everybody that both of our libraries are open to the public. Part of our missions are to serve the public, citizens of the state, as well as our primary um, uh, patrons, my case, students and faculty at the law school, and Maureen, uh, the Supreme Court um, judges and clerks and so forth. But both of us are um, you know, really committed to helping librarians around the state or around the world, where, as the case may be, to help uh, patrons that come into their libraries that have legal questions. 
Um, this we know can be uh, quite daunting. And so, but we're here to take your calls to help you uh, whenever you need it. Um, in addition, I wanted to throw out an offer. Any of you who uh, would like a law librarian to come out to your library, evaluate and assess your law collection, or do a, um, you know, a, a small seminar for your staff uh, explaining some of the legal resources um, or how to do research or how to answer certain questions, we're more than welcome to or, or willing to uh, uh, to do that. Just give me or Maureen, um, shoot us an email or a call and, and we'll work something out. Um, we also, our, our presentation this morning um, shouldn't take the whole hour, so we'll have um, more than enough time to answer questions. So if you have questions on any uh, topic, please uh, send them in. Uh, we'd love to answer, answer them. Before we set out into what we're going to talk about, I want to get clear uh, something about legal research, just a definition um, that a lot of people can get confused uh, by. Uh, with the term law, there are actually different kinds of things that are very distinct and the services and the resources to answer them are also distinct. So um, they are litigation. So you may have a patron that comes in uh, to your library who is being sued, wants to sue somebody. Um, this is civil litigation. And that's a whole different area of the law from criminal law. If someone comes in and says, I was arrested or, uh, you know, my it's often my friend or my cousin uh, was arrested. How do I represent him? That's a completely different ball of wax. But um, that there's litigation, there's work uh, involved with the patron, involved with the courts. And we've got some answers for uh, resources that can help you advise patrons. Oh, but I should, at the start, this is something that you'll hear several times uh, while we're talking. Your first uh, piece of advice to all patrons coming in with these kind of questions, get a lawyer. Um, if people feel like they can handle their own cases, it's very, very difficult. You often need the help of a, an attorney to figure it out. Mm -hmm. uh, the procedures, the forms, and what the law is. It's very difficult to do by yourself, but you can. And we're gonna talk about some resources that will help people um, uh, handle their own cases or their own defense, the case may be. Um, also, you will hear um, and you've probably heard about forms in law. That's a very different thing than what most people understand when they hear the term forms. Um, it's rare that you can find a form that you just fill out and check out boxes and submit it to the court. Um, forms are often guidelines for how to draft the final document. Um, so that can be tricky too. And another reason why you should hire a lawyer and advise your patrons to hire lawyers. Um, okay, so there's litigation. The next big chunk of law that I'm, we're going to um, uh, talk about and some resources, I'm, I'm calling transactional law. And this is where um, situations where people want uh, copies of a lease, copies of a contract, cop, you know, bill of sale, a will, or something like that. This is transactional. You're not suing somebody or being sued, but you just want to create a legal document. And that's a whole body of uh, material. Um, other things that fall into that that we're going to talk about today, patents and uh, trademarks as well. And then last but not least is the law, what people think of as a law. If I do this, is it breaking the law? Sometimes the rule doesn't fit uh, the exact situation, so you need to read the opinions of the courts or other materials to find out what the law is. This is substantive law. 
Um, it's very important to consult secondary materials, uh, scholars and academics or practitioners who write about the law to explain what it, what it is. Um, both of our libraries have ample resources to do that kind of research, but it's a completely different animal than finding forms, finding transactional you know, materials or communication. So, did I leave anything out there? Um, I think it would be a great opportunity to talk about the disclaimer about not giving legal advice. Yes. Well, yes, okay. Um, good point. <clears throat> One of the things that you should always remind, that you should know um, for your own practices, but also let patrons know if they call us or if you refer um, a patron, say, well, call the state library or call the um, law college library, the Smith Library. We can answer questions, but we can only answer reference questions on the reference level and you librarians who are listening and know exactly what I'm talking about. You can't read statutes, you can't read regulations or give opinions on what the law means. As soon as you do that, you're crossing a very uh, dark <laughs> but hard to understand line of practicing law and you can get in big trouble. Um, even reading the text of a statute to somebody over the phone, they call in and ask you to read a, 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 a section of a statute. This happens to all of us many times, at least in the law libraries. As soon as you do, the first question, um, if you get a thanks, <laughs> the first question after that is, well, what does that mean? Second, you start explaining what it means you're practicing law. The reason this is a problem is every state has a, a rule against practicing law without a license. The problem is, if you get a patron who comes in to your library and you give them advice on what it means and they rely on it to their detriment, guess who is responsible? You. And there's no way you can get out of it. If they rely on your advice or your opinion on what course of action to take, you're in trouble. So stay away. But um, yeah, that's we, for law and for medical advice. And, and medical yeah, people come yes. in for tell me what to do for this condition I have. You and I'm sure many librarians have been through this before. Preface everything with I am not a lawyer. I can't give lawyer. you legal advice. You would. But here's the my legal advice. Well, that's because I'm not a lawyer. I don't have well, the expertise for that. Yeah. But I can tell you here's the thing to look at. Now go take it to a lawyer. You know, the same thing with medical. Yeah. I am not a doctor, but here's the yes. you know Mayo Clinic page about whatever disease right. you have. Go to it yourself. I mm -hmm. always like to say we're not answering legal questions. We're just pointing you to legal resources. Yes. And that's mm -hmm. primarily what we're here to do today. Mm -hmm. Right. And I told this, uh, I was a firm librarian for years and years, uh, years ago, uh, not to date myself, but um, the, uh, uh, it was really fun to work for a big firm with a dynamic practice. And I, you know, everybody thought I was a wizard, but you know, most of our patrons think that librarians are wizards because we can answer questions. And, um, you know, they're so impressed. And I said, well, it's easy for us. All I need to know is where to find the information. I don't need to know what it means. That's okay. your job. That's, <laughs> That's your actually job. why I love being a librarian in general. I don't know a lot of stuff, but I know where to find things and then let yeah. them figure it out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, so take it looks that. good in true pursuit and things like that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's um, uh, but that's a very important lesson, and, and just be careful of um, answering those kinds of questions. And it's so easy to get sucked up or sucked in to answering them, especially the person who sounds pathetic and oh, I just they need this yeah. one section, and um, and then as soon as you read it, man, you're you're in trouble. It's it's a slippery slope. We run into this with our students who are answering the phone at the cert desk uh, mm -hmm. all the time. They want to help someone. Well, of course. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and they're just learning the law, so they think they're a little bit experts. <laughs> so, um, 
All that having been said, yeah. um, I'd like to uh, uh, start out um, asking Keelan to give us a tour up on the screen. Hopefully you see the yep. um, Schmidt Law Library website, which is law.unl.edu slash library. So Keelan, you want to show us a couple sure. of the um, resources on our webpage. Great. These resources would be good for you as librarians to use to point your patrons to, um, or you can just point your patrons to our website. Uh, I'll take you first to the complete A to Z list of databases where um, you will find free resources. Or maybe, never mind, I'm going to take you just to point you to the m most important thing, actually, which would be our phone number and um, our reference email. So as librarians, you're welcome to submit questions um, to the law ref at unl.edu email address, where one of our wonderful reference librarians will be able to help you with your questions. And you're welcome to call as well. And then, of course, um, our location is there and our hours are there as well. And yeah. let me just say, the hours that are listed there are the times yeah. when our reference librarians are actually scheduled to handle reference questions but yes. if you send an email to that law ref at unl.edu um, we will answer questions virtually 24 hours a day i've never gotten up in the middle of the night to answer a question but um, <laughs> over the weekends or uh, in the evenings um, all of us are checking our email uh, often enough to where you may be surprised if we can um, answer questions for you. And you know, don't don't hesitate. Um, don't don't recommend this to your patrons. But you, if you need a, a quick consultation, you can use that email address. Say, call me, and we'll try to get back to you as soon as we can. Yes. Explain, I'm a librarian at so-and-so yes. library, right. and yeah. I have a patron exactly. that I need some advice on how to... Yeah. 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 give you special service. Yeah. Yes, if you preface, I'm a librarian from this library, then you're, you're golden in terms of <laughs> the communication. Okay, so then I will take you to our online databases. Um, you'll see here, these are listed out primarily for our students because they are um, IP authenticated. You can access them if you're on our campus. And you can access Hein Online and Bloomberg um, if you are on our campus, but some of these are just for law school students only. Uh, but I will take you to our A to Z list of databases. And um, we add to this constantly, so you'll find new resources all the time. But our uh, free databases are tagged um, by free access in the database type. So you should be able to quickly see a list of everything that we have pulled out to um, offer you free access to. Um, we're not offering it, they are free. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so you can scroll through there to see if anything matches um, what your patrons are asking you about. And usually they will have a nice description so you can understand a little bit more about them. But like um, I said, if you come to our campus, you'll get, you can get more. And, and if I can say, the free um, databases, as you're looking at them, they're all uh, gov, gov, gov websites. Mm -hmm. What we found uh, over the years is many um, times uh, people are, there are many sources for the Code of Federal Regulations, for example. Mm -hmm. Knowing which one of the many sources is reliable is part of why we put these on our website so they're, they're certified. Right. Yeah. They've been if we listen yes. them here, these been are vetted by ones experts. you can take right. to the bank. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's, okay. So then I'll take you back to our main site again and point out um, a lot of our useful resources. And there's one especially for public libraries. It's the Public Library Toolkit. And I encourage you to check this one out in more detail. You'll get lots of um, resources to help answer you answer questions. So um, I need a lawyer, where can I find a lawyer? You can answer that question with Nebraska referral resources and you can send your patron to one of those websites. Um, and then you're, you can also link to a lot of the Nebraska judicial branch resources 
and the access to justice resources that Maureen will tell us more about. Um, and if you are not in Nebraska, or if your patron um, is moving to another state and they need help, we've also linked um, to, I see there in your introduction. Um, yes, we've also linked to this website here, which will give you access to public library toolkits throughout the US. So yeah, and you, know, list, Oklahoma, you can find something there. Yeah, LIS stands for Legal Information Services to the Public. Um, SIS, the Special Interest Section of, of the American Association of Law Libraries. This is a project that's been undertaken by AALL, our national organization. Right. And so when you looked at that, you see LISP, SIS, Public <laughs> Library Toolkit, people may wonder what that's about. Right, but um, yes, yeah. so feel welcome to go there if you're looking for information in another state. Okay. Lots of back arrow in here. Um, all right, another resource to point out is uh, we have research guides, and those are on a variety of topics, and um, where we'll list out secondary materials and other resources to help you get more information on that subject in particular. Um, if, our, if the subject you're looking for isn't there, you can contact us and we'll give you more information. And then our library services um, link there leads you to information about document delivery and interlibrary loan. Um, we're very active in interlibrary loan, so if you ever find something um, legally related that you don't have at your library, check uh, OCLC or you can keep, even come to our website and then request it through our interlibrary loan system, which um, you'll find the link within this link here. And also, Keelan mentioned document delivery at that website. This is something that we'd like you all to be familiar with and know about, um, but kind of hold it close to the <laughs> breast. Um, we, it's primarily for alums and attorneys and judges throughout the state. If they call and they need an article or they need a, um, a case or a group of cases because they don't have easy access to the material there you can fill out the form and contact our interlibrary loan department and we have a flat fee and off the top of my head i can't it's remember listed, what, it's, the, listed. Yeah. it's like five dollars or something like yeah. that and it's we'll copy something and either fax it or uh, email it make a pdf scan it and send it to you um, so, you know, we'll, we're more than happy to do it. I just don't want, you know, kind of hold it close. <laughs> right. So, again, if you're asking for something to preface who you are, that'll help um, yes. us be able yes. to process it properly for you. And then, um, Rich is thrilled to talk to you all about the patent and trademark <laughs> resources. We just became a PTRC office last two years ago. Uh, not even, not even summer year. 2018. Yeah, yeah, it's like a year and a half ago. We're very excited about this. Uh, we are now a, an official patent and trademark resource center at the University of Nebraska College of Law. Um, what that means, we're actually it's sort of like being a deposit federal depository library. Mm -hmm. We're actually a branch, or we're a service branch of the U.S. Patent Office itself. They bring us out once a year for uh, training and in-depth training. Um, so I've been to one of those uh, sessions, so I'm sort of half cooked. But um, <laughs> this lib guide that we have up on the screen, uh, if you look at the tabs, uh, it, it will answer most every question that someone would have about patents and trademarks. Now, this is another area um, of law where we strongly recommend hiring an attorney to help you um, do your patent uh, registration, your patent searches. Um, but it is all uh, doable on your own. And one of the things that I do is my, in my role as the, I don't know what the TRC specialist for uh, Nebraska, yeah, yeah, is there a title? Yeah. It's representative, I guess. Representative. It's not as fantasy. <laughs> yeah. um, is I will uh, 
I, I take phone calls from uh, pay, people from all over the state who have ideas and questions about how to do their file their own patents, uh, what to do about trademarks. Um, people have uh, called in, we've made appointments, they come in um, and I can talk to them and walk them through the resources that are available to do their, handle their own work. The Patent Office is really an extraordinary organization, uh, one of the uh, best run uh, departments in federal government, in my opinion. They're just outstanding, um, including uh, they will offer help to people that are trying to do their own patent work one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. They have a pro bono uh, program, program, pro se assistance, really rich group of resources. You can get to virtually everything that we've got from this uh, live guide. Oh, except for the plant patents, which we actually they have will. in print at our library. Very fascinating collection that you wouldn't really expect to see in a law library. So if you're ever looking to it's, learn more about plants, we're, we're head getting, on over. We're getting into a little bit of trivia here. But it's a, <laughs> yes, but, I can't but, I have to represent. Keelan has just I love it. embraced the plant patents. But wow, one of the things great. that's the most bizarre um, features of being a PTRC is that so there's millions of patents okay and they're filed and you can get access to them uh, through a variety of ways um, online and you see all the diagrams and the full explanations every patent ever filed but plant patents are considered special they're they actually mail to us stacks of color copies of the plant patents and now you probably like me or Keelan or anybody who has heard about this for the first time would not expect there to be the volume of plant patents that there is how many do we get maybe 20 a month no I'd say more than that more than that yeah probably like 40 patents a month or more so people are patenting plant, <laughs> oh, patenting goodness. plants at an alarming rate, and, <laughs> and it's everything from peonies, new colors, apples. new fruits, apples. Mm -hmm. It's astonishing. I, so I believe it. No, you know, if if you, I bet if you're a gardener, you get mm -hmm. it because every year you get a new seed catalog, and yeah. there's like, here's the 20 new types of, of apples we came up with since last year. Those things yeah. are okay. <laughs> yeah. So, so if you come into the Schmidt Law Library, one of the things that's kind of fun. Uh, Keelan has started a uh, bullet board where we, uh, last year it was plant patent of the month and then she <laughs> selected a plant patent to, uh, that resonated with something in the library. My month, you March, was rich fire. Yep. I can't yeah. remember what it was. I was a peach. A peach. Or a oh. <laughs> yeah. so, anyway, anyway, it's fun. Yeah. So we're doing adventure of the month this year, but anyway, it's a lot of fun. So PTRC. Take, yes. take a field trip to the library to see those. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah, you, anybody's welcome to come in. We have plenty of parking too. Well, um, I'll just say one more thing is the Nebraska State Law Resources where we list all the primary resources in Nebraska, like Nebraska briefs um, and a bunch of other things actually. So in the Public Library Toolkit, you'll be link, you can link out to the Nebraska Online Legal Self-Help Center. And Maureen's going to talk to us more about that. And I said all those words. Right right. Yeah. <laughs> you just so got, it's hard to say for some reason. So, yeah. so Maureen, um, one of the things before you, you get started, um, your library is known as the State Library. We are. Mm -hmm. so, so tell us a little bit about how you are the state library. Oh, it's so confusing, it's confusing, isn't it? Oh, it's horrible. <laughs> because as you I don't know why. <laughs> in the introduction that really the Nebraska Library Commission functions more of like a traditional state library. I think in perhaps states, at one yeah. time the Nebraska State Library did, but we've mm -hmm. been a law library as far as I understand it since sometime in the 1950s. Mm -hmm. um, and we are a government law library, we're a court law library, and we are a public law library. So what that means is that our primary patrons are people who work for the Nebraska court system, our state legislature, and um, state agencies, but also the general public. 
And uh, that's primarily what I'm going to talk about today because the website that you guys see on the screen there was actually created by the Nebraska Supreme Court, the Access to Justice Committee and the Subcommittee on Self-Represented Litigants got together and decided it was time that we create some resources for people that are trying to navigate the legal system without an attorney. And even if you aren't here in Nebraska, kind of like what we were saying, all of these resources, you should check with your own state's judicial branch, your local law schools, they will have very similar resources. Um, every state's a little bit different because time and money obviously will dictate what they've created so far and it's always a work in progress. Um, yeah, so before you move on, I'd like you to, to run through uh, some of the resources that are on the left there, um, the, the resources okay. that, that are available to patrons, but I want to just throw in a pitch. Okay. If when you're visiting the state uh, capitol, you want to visit the state library. When Not now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's going to be a couple of years, right? Uh, yeah, well, I think the better part of two years. Yeah. yeah. So, but when it reopens, you definitely want to go in. It is, it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful, yeah. beautiful library, beautiful murals. Uh, secret doors yes it's and, always fun finding the secrets <laughs> yeah so so i just wanted to put that picture thanks yeah, yeah. <laughs> we will be back up <laughs> yes. in the meantime thank you for hosting me yeah yeah okay well so a little bit about what's actually on this website uh like i said this is primarily designed for people that are trying to navigate the legal system on their own however anybody who's touching you know the court system may come to this website for various reasons uh, before I touch on this menu here on the left, these resources right here in the center are some of what I call like the quick links or the fast links for like the super common things like just looking up your court date, paying your fines online. Um, mediation is something where people may be trying to avoid going to court at all. Um, this handy little link down here that's called representing yourself in court gives some just super practical tips about how to dress for court, how you address the judge, and what kinds of things you might need to bring with you. Um, but then, oh, I should touch on this too. This is really important. We've already talked about yeah. it, the disclaimer, but it cannot be said enough, basically. And if you spend any time looking through this website, you'll see this disclaimer pop up over and over again. We cannot stress to our patrons enough that even though these resources were written and put together by judges and attorneys and they are approved for use in the court, they may not be appropriate for every single situation and it is not a substitute for an attorney. Just period. It is, you're not giving anyone the runaround if you suggest contacting an attorney. I mean, that is the and only actual advice you can give. <laughs> the legal. Legal aid, Nebraska legal aid, which is part of the the um, Legal Services Corporation, the LSC, which is uh, federally funded. Essentially, it's a national public interest law firm um, that has branches in each state, and it's funded by Congress. And its mission is to help people who can't afford mm -hmm. uh, to hire their own lawyer and um, so we keep saying hire a lawyer, consult a lawyer. If you can't afford it, mm -hmm. there's always a resource available Absolutely. to you to find one if you if you really need it. On that topic, the very first thing on this menu over here is legal resources and information. And I would say as librarians, this is probably going to be your number one resource mm -hmm. because this is all of your ways to refer people to additional information how to find an attorney, legal aid is the first thing up there. And as Rich said, every and, state does have legal aid. Um, and likewise, the local legal aid um, offices, we have um, we know them and we've had a tour of their offices, they're outstanding. Right, and they actually offer a lot of these similar self-help guides to yep. their website as well. And we don't discriminate. You don't have to use ours. You can use theirs. It's mm -hmm. certainly preference, but their stuff is also approved by the court as well. Yeah. And you know, you might find a patron who says, "Well, I make too much money. Like I already tried legal aid and they mm -hmm. turned me away." There's also another thing called limited scope 
representation. Yes. We have a whole section on that here too. It's an option that a lot of people just don't even know exists. Mm -hmm. This section really explains what types of questions you would ask an attorney. If you want them to work for you at a reduced cost, they may ask you to do part of the work for them. They may say, well, you should go to the online you know, legal self-help center, download these forms, fill them out, then you come back to me and I'll do the filing. Or, or, you know, I don't, it would be sure. different in every situation, but it is another potential it's option. A, yeah, and it's a new service that's evolving in uh, mm -hmm. law um, because traditionally uh, the rules were set up to make the lawyer responsible for the welfare, the legal welfare of the client mm -hmm. in enforcing that relationship. This is sort of taking it and dividing it up. So uh, a lawyer will agree to represent um, a patron just on one sliver of what their legal issues are to write a brief or write a motion, but not actually give you legal advice you know, about the whole case. And it, it's very controversial at this point, but it's a great thing for uh, people trying to represent themselves. I think it's a good resource because there's, you know, there's legal aid where people think it's I'm too poor. I don't have enough money. I can't afford it. But and then there's people who are, I have my own lawyer who I see weekly. Yeah, yeah. And there's all of us. Yeah. Yeah. And there's all of us in the middle who are like, well, I need a lawyer for a particular thing. But no, I'm I'm middle class. I don't have the the money to afford them. What do I do? I'm kind. There's kind of that they, they're lost. In right. Yeah. Yeah. They're not. Yeah. And through the referral services that we list here. I believe that like if you go to Nebraska, find the lawyer, you can mm -hmm. tell them, you know, the area of law that you're looking for help yes. in, the area you live in. And I do believe you can also select limited scope now. Yeah. Um, sure. or discount, or I don't know how the language they use, but there is a way to look for providers who are willing to do limited mm -hmm. scope. Sure. And I imagine the laws are different in every state oh, too, boy. as far as like what <laughs> is actually allowed under yeah. limited scope. You know, it's a it it's um I'm involved in a project with um, a group of people up in Chicago who are working on this um, to help pro se litigants in this limited scope. And so I am I write a book on 50 state survey of state laws. So they contacted me to put one together about this. Problem is it's not governed by statute. It's governed by bar rules, mm -hmm. bar association rules. Those are frightfully difficult to research. And so if I end up doing a chapter on this, it's going to take up a whole other volume of the book. <laughs> yeah, it's tricky. Legal research is not easy. <laughs> no. And he's a trained attorney. <laughs> yeah, right, right, yeah. All right, so just some of the other resources here. And this is very similar to your public library toolkit as well, just listing up all of these other resources. Nebraska Free Legal Answers. This is another thing that is uh, countrywide. I think mm -hmm. every state has their own version. They're all, I think, I think it's overseen or operated by legal aid as well. So. Or at least it is in our state. It might be different in other states. Mm -hmm. But it is a free online forum where anyone can go in and type their question and then a group of real living breathing attorneys may or may not answer your question. It really depends on who logs in and what kind of what laws, what area is their expertise. Mm -hmm. I don't think that they do any criminal questions. I still think it's all civil, just mm -hmm. like uh, legal aid, and really the vast majority of our website as well. There is a little bit of criminal information on here, but because those people are given an attorney by the state, Right. We can't put that much time and resources into helping them when we're trying to help people who don't. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. um, there are plenty of physical walk-in legal help, self-help centers throughout the state. Also, the law schools here both have legal clinics, so you should check with your local law schools as well if you're not here in Nebraska. And then, of course, we always point to libraries. Um, us, Douglas County has a law library. Even other counties remotely throughout the state 
they may not have a traditional law library, but they will often have a very small collection of primary source law books, like the statutes, which also you can connect to online. But they have kiosks, which are computers, where you can go in and connect to this website. So you have access to all of the forms that we've created and also case searching. So if you're looking for, if you're involved in any sort of litigation, you could get the uh, case files, court records, things like that, if you go into the library. Otherwise, you have to pay per search, and I think it's something crazy, like $15 per search. Oh yeah. So I do recommend uh, checking with your local <laughs> courthouse and seeing what they have. And then we go on to list um, just a whole bunch of nonprofit organizations that may or may not be able to assist mm -hmm. your patrons as well. These are always worth looking into. However, um, if anyone's ever asked you a legal question in your library, you probably know that time is of the essence. The people are mm -hmm. often stressed out. They've already called everybody else. You're their last resource. So first of all, Again, don't panic, don't be afraid to say, well, you really need to contact an attorney. That's mm -hmm. the best thing for you. But I do, all, if, if any of their problems touch on any of these things in this menu on the left, which there's a lot of family law, divorce, custody, mm -hmm. estates, um, if they're trying to uh, change their name or get protection from an abuser, send them to this website, have them read through the modules, and just see if these answer their questions. There's tons of information here. I don't want to go through every single thing here. Just yeah, there's so many different yeah. topics. Yeah. So um, let me let me if I can jump in one more time. Um, I tell all of our uh, student uh, workers at the cert desk in the library, and anybody who is interested in working in a law library. There's one important thing that, that we should all keep in mind when we talk to people that are visiting our library. I've never once met a non-law librarian who has walked into a law library just for fun and recreation. <laughs> they come to public libraries True. for fun. They come to law libraries because they have a legal problem. And if you've ever had a legal problem, it is stressful. It is difficult. It's challenging. Everything bad about it. So you want to treat and it's people. Due by 5 PM. And it's due by 5 p.m. And so you want to treat all of your patrons who come in with legal problems um, with kid gloves. And cut them some slack. They may be anxious, uh, you know, bordering on rude. You, you, you don't have to accept everything. It's not an excuse. But be aware that people are under extreme pressure. And um, I've so, had people thank me for help when really all I did was listen. Yes. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. Sometimes it's all they need is someone who they can, you know, bounce ideas off of or right. talk, just vent to about whatever is happening. And then you say, okay, and now go here and find a lawyer and you'll be fine. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. But all of these resources today, I mean, if you point them to any of these websites, mm -hmm. I mean, that is giving them help. You may feel like you're out of your league, but we all have felt like yes. that. Oh, yeah. so. I think some of these basic things, you like, like for, just for example, what you ended up on the screen, you know, simple divorce with without children and child, mm -hmm. child support. If you're suddenly in that situation or someone comes in and they are, you've never been in that situation before. Right. You don't even know what's going to happen. What is going? What is the process? I know now I need to do this because it's happening, but what mm -hmm. this can just help um, with some of that stress. Absolutely. Oh, just knowing, oh, even though this one, I can't use this to do the divorce, but at least I can find out what is going right. to be. Even if these don't apply directly to your situation, sometimes I'll just say, you know what, sit down, take the 10 minutes to read through the section, because even if it's not perfect for your circumstances, mm -hmm. you're going to learn a lot about the mm -hmm. process. You're going to see the how the forms are titled. That will give you information. And then when you contact an attorney or legal aid, you've got information going in. And I understand a little bit more right. when they tell you things. Yeah. yeah. And this is one of the areas where uh, word of mouth um, and uh, what conventional wisdom, what am I trying to say? Um, uh, 
just the popular notion of what the law is. Common knowledge is almost always 80% incorrect. <laughs> and so people, when they have a law problem, they'll immediately talk to their father, their friend, their spouse, their you know, anybody but a lawyer, and they'll get all wrong information oh, yes. from well, every 15 direction. Fifteen years ago, when my uncle did this, this is what happened. Oh, Nothing's going to happen to you. And it, yes, <laughs> no, and, it, no. <laughs> and it oh, it changes. And so part of it, you got to calm people down, mm -hmm. say, okay, let's see what it is, and then get them on track. And that's the challenge yeah, sometimes. Yeah. Does anybody out there, if you have any, um, not to wrap up, just yeah, yeah, my yeah, deal, if any questions or comments or specific legal in encounters you've had or things you want to know about, type in the questions section and ask and we can um, show you where to find info on here or give you non-lawyer non advice <laughs> on, yes. on where to go. So if you do have anything in particular that you're wondering about because you signed up and joined here us for today, um, get your questions in there so we can um, help point you in the right direction hopefully before we leave today. Yeah. While we're waiting for potential questions, I will just say some of the more popular topics that we cover over here are things like name change, handling sure. estates without going through probate, um, power of attorney, medical power of attorney, sure. financial power of attorney. I already mentioned the protection of abuse. We even have um, emancipation stuff in here. Um, we do have some stuff on rent or landlord, but I think it takes you directly to legal aid. I think if I click on this, maybe it goes to legal aid. Mm -hmm. well, okay. Statutes that relate to, right. Yeah. yeah, and while we're looking at that, that filing for dollar judgment, it just made me um, uh, think about one of the things too that a lot of people um, uh, it takes some time to to learn about when they want when they've been wronged and they want to sue somebody one of the first questions that they need to answer is which court to file in mm -hmm. is it go to a small claims court county court right. federal court um, and there are very very important and very hard clad rules as to where to go for um, what thing. And the amounts uh, change. Yes. Do you have a small claims? We have a or small a, claims section. We also have like a flow chart on here somewhere where it actually walks you through, you know, this is the uh, kind of case you already go to this court, but I don't think it's going to say. No. Yeah, I was just looking up more info about it here. Small claims and click on is that that must have the dollar oh yeah. Judgments may not exceed thirty six hundred dollars. That's one of the changes right here. So if it's not um, if it's more than that, then it's uh, for the district yeah. court. Yeah. Federal court, well, I wouldn't recommend anybody try to handle their own federal litigation. We do have a question that came in, and I think, um, I believe he came in a little late um, to uh -huh. the session today. Um, but it's a good, actually a good question. Um, so he says, we are part of UNL, but in Curtis. And it's actually oh. the librarian at the um, Nebraska College of Technical Agriculture yeah. in Curtis. Yeah. Um, and wants to know what kind of access do we have to the law library? Like, because they're part of UNL. I know you were saying there's certain things that are on the page you should yeah. have getting that are free, they don't get to. And then if you're in the building, yeah. there's the IP, but he, they are part of UNL. So is there right. something different? Um, your that? IP ranges should be, in terms of the general, um, I'll point you here, I'll in terms you. of the general, general resources, uh, um, in ter like uh, Pine Online, that your IP range, I believe, is included in the ones that we provide to our vendors. So you'd have access because they're part of UNL, and, right? Yeah. But, but if, the and, law college. but if not, yeah, um, let us know. 
and we'll oh, we yeah. can add that IP range uh, um, to it. As well in the complete A to Z list, if you are part of UNL but not the law college, you'll see there's um, a little icon here, UNL law faculty students and staff only. Those are literally only to law staff and only. But you can come but to... just above that. Yeah, yeah the above yes. talks about the yeah, above other, any UNL. Right. Okay. Um, we're reformatting this uh, LibGuide a little bit, so consider changes are going to come, but that should help you in terms of what you are what you have access to in Curtis. Um, but otherwise, you can certainly come to the library if you're ever, or you can uh, email us, and then if you need something in particular, we can get that to you. Yeah. 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 But it said at the beginning, the law library is open to anyone to come in. It is. Yeah. And yeah. so if you're here at Lincoln anytime, oh, you can do that. <laughs> yeah. But as far as remotely, because of being part of UNL, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Good. And we're Thanks. and and um, the library that we're talking about, the one in Curtis, mm -hmm. they're part of Uncle. It's it's a UNL gonna, uh, like. Are they part of the ILS? Yeah. I think we can talk about that. Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, but there may be ways that you're more connected um, to our services than we realize. Um, so. But that's something to definitely uh, follow up with. Um, They're part of the I assume UNL that you were, system. Uh, yeah. Yeah, They're report the to the, to the yep. dean um, or me, and, and we'll figure it out. <laughs> Reach out to them if you need to, Mo, and ask. Yes. <laughs> well, that was pretty much what we had intended to cover today and um, you know we can leave it at that and let yes yeah, so anybody have any other questions anything else you want to know about about the legal resources we have to get that you have access to and uh, go ahead and type in in your questions I think this is some great resource especially that these are so I think it's the kind of thing that a lot of people don't realize is free and open to anyone to get yeah. to yeah. Um, I think there's a misconception about universities that sure. in general you have to be one of the students it's not for me I can't even go in the doors and that's not you know no. the case yeah yeah okay. and let me so um, you might want to mention the terminal we have our own public terminal yeah we have a public access terminal yeah. mm -hmm. so there are some if 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 you send patrons to us there are uh, databases that they can get access to um, while they're in the library through these terminals that you can't get access to otherwise. Mm -hmm. um, but one thing that, that we are more than happy to do, and I mentioned this a little bit at the beginning, but if um, anyone, uh, say, has a class that you know they need, the students need uh, to know how to do legal research as part of a, the class project or something mm -hmm. like that, we often host uh, tours. Uh, we've hosted tours from students from Dome, Union College, um, uh, Wesleyan, um, you know, specific classes. We'll give tours to give people oriented on our legal resources. Mm -hmm. we're, we're happy to come out and do those. If you in, in one of the public libraries uh, feel it would be helpful to um, have put a group together, um, and you would like one of us to come out and talk to them about some basics of doing legal research, we can have a shot at that. Yeah, and I will just say we just created a um, self-help, a law self-help sort of section in our library. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that might be a great resource in terms of pointing people to actual physical books that they prefer in their yeah. information network. And maybe even um, high school. Oh, yeah, um, absolutely. This you know, the schools in town or one of one of the things that's sort of been high on my personal list I just haven't had time to really um, explore it enough um, I remember I had some excellent um, education in high school in civics mm -hmm. class um, they taught I know everything about government but how to find the materials that government produces the laws and regulations. Mm -hmm. So I've been really desirous of working with um, LPS or any of the schools to come in and do, I could do a one hour session 
on um, the bibliography of government. Um, it's one thing to learn about government, but then how do you go and find the regs? How do you respond? How do you interact? It's much easier than you would think. Mm -hmm. um, so, but it's also not very intuitive. Just knowing if your state's, you know, code is available online is a yes. great resource. Knowing how to search those codes is a great mm -hmm. thing to be able to show your patrons. A lot of mm -hmm. even local municipal codes are online now. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, we have that here. Nebraska state statutes are online. Um, through the Nebraska Clearinghouse that we handle here at the Library Commission, where all state agencies are required to send us copies of documentation, and we, as the library commission type state library, mm -hmm. are, are um, tasked by state statute to maintain all of this. And a lot of it gets scanned and put online. Yep. Um, I send a lot of people to you. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> they so, call me thinking that I have all I know. It just well, seems you know, you know, at least we know who each other is. <laughs> and this morning on NPR, on Morning Edition, there was a story about a big change in national national resources law that's being proposed by the federal government. They want to shorten the amount of time to do environmental impact statements. Mm -hmm. And in the course of talking about these proposed new regulations, the reporter mentioned that they're having a hearing in Denver, and so they're, they have 100 slots, and any, any citizen can go in and, and talk. Um, but then there, it also said they're taking digital comments on these new regulations. Well, and that sounds, wow, that's, why are, it's neat that they're doing this. They've been doing that all along since the beginning of the country. Um, uh, federal agencies, when they propose regulations, it's part of the American, uh, uh, the Administrative Procedures Act the APA, mm -hmm. that it has to be proposed as a proposed reg, published in the Federal Register, and then there's a specific there's a time for period. comment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And anybody can comment. And this is what I was saying, it's a lot easier to interact with the government than you than people think yeah. it is. But you just got another right place to go online and right. click and where to type in your <laughs> your your comments, your complaints, whatever. Yes. <laughs> Comments. Yeah. Compliments. Compliments. Yeah, sure. yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, well, it doesn't look like any desperate questions came in right now. That's okay. Everybody's got We're a lot good. of good info. Yeah. Um, I think this is great. You guys know where to reach out to um, to them on, on the different websites, the, the UNL email um, and the, the online legal self-help center. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so definitely use those resources. Reach out to them to um, if you need more information. Um, so thank you everybody for attending. Thank you guys all for coming over here this morning. Pleasure. This is great. I'm glad we got some info out there. And we were talking earlier. And we had talked previously about doing some regular mm -hmm. um, coming on um, regularly onto Encompass Live with other legal topics. Sure. So um, keep an eye on our schedule um, coming up in the um, future for other things that are. Available. If anybody has suggestions on things they'd like us to talk about, yeah, um, they'd like a um, a full hour of talking about the intricacies of. The KF schedule or you know, cataloging. <laughs> yeah, cataloggers love love the coming on it and having uh, sessions. Well, yes. You'd be surprised actually. <laughs> we do we do things here on Incomes like we do like I said, we'd also do topics. Um, anything related to cataloging is hugely popular, right? And children's and teen. I don't know if that you guys are doing yeah, that, but <laughs> but yeah. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you. Yeah, so yeah. thank you. Interesting topic. All right. Um, you have the keyboard and the mouse here, and we'll wrap things up for everybody. So that will wrap it up for today's show. And I'm going to show you here, as I mentioned earlier, um, where you'll find our archives. Um, this is our Encompass Live website, uh, but you can go to, you can search on here, or this is our Library Commission website, sorry. Um, you can search on here for Encompass Live. But you can also use um, any search engine of your choice. So far, um, and this is the it doesn't have it, uh, we'll end up here. Um, so far, Encompass Live is the only thing called that on the internet. Nobody else is like that. <laughs> so if you just Google whatever you want, and we will come up um, with our um, web pages here. And this is our main Encompass Live page. We've got our upcoming shows listed here for the next few months that have been scheduled. And this is where our archives are. There's a link right underneath for the archives. 
Most recent one is at the top of the list. This is last week's best new teen reads. So today's show will be done as long as uh, GoToWebinar and YouTube cooperate with me by the end of the day today. We should have a link up there for it. Everybody who attended today and registered to get an email from me, I will also push it out to our mailing list and social media and everything, letting you know when it's available there. We'll have a link to the recording, and then within the description for today's show, there's links also to the different the web pages that they showed too, so you have quick access to all of that. Um, while we're here, I'll show you this is our full archives here. You can see a search feature here. You can search by anything, any people's names, topics. Um, mm -hmm. You can search your entire archives or just the most recent 12 months. That is because Encompass Live started in January 2009, and if I go all the way to the bottom here, and wow. you can get, close your eyes, <laughs> all the way to our very first show. Our full archives are all on here, and it's one giant long web page. So we put in a search feature because it got a little unwieldy. Um, so do just pay attention when you are doing a search on here, if you're searching the entire thing, just pay attention to the original broadcast date. Uh, some things will be um, always relevant, you know, new books for teens, what books were good back in 2010 may still be good. But certain topics, things are going to be maybe old, outdated. Uh, services and resources may no longer exist, may have changed. Links and URLs may not work anymore. Just you know, pay attention to what, da what the date is when you are here on the archives and doing a search. Um, but if you do want something more recent, just limit it to that most recent 12 months there. Um, we do have a Facebook page, page too. So if you do like to use Facebook, give us a like over there. You can follow what we're doing, we'll post reminders about shows, things that are coming up. Here's a reminder to log into today's show. Uh, so um, it's going to pop up and want me to log in, but so do you know, keep an eye on there. No, not right now. Thank you. Um, about uh, what we have coming up on the show and when our recording is ready. So that will be it for today's show. Uh, next week, I hope you join us. Our, uh, we'll have, we've got um, February filled in here, March we're getting filled in. You'll see some April dates coming up on the schedule too. But next week's show is our One Book, One Nebraska for 2020, All the Young Men, about um, the, um, the first memoir by a USS Arizona survivor. Mm. So that is our One Book, One Nebraska for 2020. So we'll be talking about that, um, <clears throat> what's going on with it for this over the year, um, how you can get involved in doing things at your library. So do sign up and join us for that next week or any of our other upcoming shows. Other than that, uh, thank you everyone for attending, and I hope we see you another time in Encompass Live. Bye-bye.